you're listening to the Heroes Power Hour, presented by BlizzPro.com. Your host, Balrog fan, Zexorus, and DJ Tyrant. Welcome everyone to the Heroes Power Hour. This is a Heroes of the Storm podcast brought to you by BlizzPro.com. This is episode number 72 and we have so much to talk about with the PTR dropping. Uh, Once again, I'm your host, DJ Tyrant, and with me is the always awesome crew here. They were making so many faces on the preview screen, so I had to stare stare at them doing that while, while getting our intro going. But to my immediate right, we have Balrog fan BP. How are you, my friend? I'm I'm doing really good. I'm I'm uh, just uh, having a great time. Willie's frozen. Ask Willie a question. <laughs> Willie, also known as Xerus, how are you? Uh, are you having problems with your computer? You look a little uh, frozen in place, there, friend. No, I'm doing absolutely just <laughs> fine. Thank you very much. I I have determined that. Since uh, Charlie has shaved, I need to double the size of my beard now. I have to there make up go. the lack of beard on the show, unless <laughs> Artifice wants to jump in. <laughs> uh, speaking of Artifice, how are you doing over there? She's doing very uh, muted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am muted. Well, you were complaining about my typing, so I thought I'd be nice. Um, I'm doing well. Uh, a little spaced out, but it's a good day. Did you have a little bit of the sick. you have a little bit of the fell plague there? Yeah, it was a uh, legion kind of got to me a little bit, so <laughs> just just a little. There we go. And Carl, how about you? How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. Uh, classes started this week, so I have to remember what school is. That's a bummer. It's yeah, cool. I don't miss that. <laughs> it's Senior a year though. There you go. Nice. Uh, but here in high school, by the way. Yeah. There, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Getting married in high school, I see how it is. <laughs> Willie, how was your week? My week was absolutely <laughs> fantastic. I actually I played abs- I, I played absolutely like no heroes. I do have a team tryout tomorrow apparently. Um Ooh. with a uh who is it again? Uh Team Blaze. I wish. That would be great. <laughs> uh OG I think. Uh Origin? Origin? No, OG. <laughs> uh, they're uh, a Heroes United team. They're an amateur team. so uh, They're looking for a flex player. So I'm, I toss them a message, and apparently I have a tryout tomorrow. There you uh, go. Jimmy, how was your weekend? It was really good, really busy, and I, I played did quite a fun. I did do something fun last night. I went to the launch event for World of Warcraft Legion, got to... Talk with a bunch of Blizzard devs and hang out with a bunch of Blizzard employees and community members and saw some Heroes people there too, so it was really cool. Um, got to see uh, the manager from Real Life Geniuses before she headed off to Seattle today. Um, but yeah, that w- and I played quite a bit of Heroes. I played a lot of Team League this weekend. Uh, on Friday night, I got in with Alebeard and... I uh, forget which, uh, it was Into the Nexus kind of put together a, a Team League night to try to get people to be able to get that mount because literally you just have to finish your placement matches to be able to get the mount from this season. So we did that. Games were a lot of fun. This game just is so much better when you have a full five man or five woman, five person, five person group. PC, bro, PC. <laughs> is Jimmy part of the five woman team? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it was really fun. I got to play uh, mostly Assassin, so it was a lot of fun to, to do that instead of always being on support, I feel like, sometimes when I get in those groups. That's unusual uh, for you. I know. But Alebeard, he played a mean Lily. It was awesome. It was really cool. So uh, yeah, get into uh, your, your Team League matches, get those placements done, get that mount. Charlie, how about you uh, You're waking pretty, here. Pretty, uh, laid back. I've been uh, work has been just been crazy, so I, I haven't got a chance to play as much as I wanted to. And then uh, 
we did a bunch of podcasting stuff for the other network on Saturday, mm-hmm. so didn't get a chance to jump on the PTR yet, hoping to do it later this week. For sure. And let's see, Zex, did you talk about your week yet? I did. Okay, Artifice, Artifice kind of shoved me into the that uh, <laughs> that question. <laughs> Send help. Art- Artifice, how about you? I know you've had some trials and tribulations over Hero League, kind of going I... up and down. How how has your week been? I know you played a little bit of PTR. We'll get into detail about that in just a bit, but <laughs> your hero's week. <laughs> yeah, we'll save that juicy bit for later. Um, the regular game, it's been... Uh, I don't know. It seems like I've had a lot of longer queue times recently, and um, I've been seeing quite a lot of resistance in in the the ranking system with people always wanting to play the meta and I'm not in you know I'm not in the grandmaster I'm not in the master I'm down in the average level so for the for the down there it's like people ban the same things that the grandmasters ban thinking that's the only thing they can do and it's it's a little frustrating because it's like you want you want to do the rank, but you also want to do things that you don't want someone to play Kael'thas if they have like a level five Kael'thas that they did like mm-hmm. a year and a half ago. It's not the same. Yeah, I think one of the other frustrating things I've seen a lot in the the ranks that we're at is people won't ban medic. I know it sounds ridiculous, but a lot of people just do not know how to dive properly in those kinds of compositions, and then all of a sudden you have like nothing to counter medic and medic is just free to wreck your team <laughs> yeah it's always fun i've been noticing a lot more hammer on the regular mm-hmm. matches and i think that's going to change as soon as the next patch goes live but i could be wrong um that's about it so far sorry for the ptr i'm holding off on that yeah <laughs> carl how about your week in gaming um my week the most of the playing i done was on the ptr got to i tried out uh, the three i mean they're they're different, but I tried out basically a Q, a W, and an auto attack build on Vala, just yeah. to kind of see how they felt. Um, you know, so that was what I was doing. Had some fun with it. Uh, I think I lost two of the three games, but I like Vala, so it was a good time. Cool, that sounds good. Uh, and just really quickly, I did want to mention taking a look at the hot slogs. Uh, Hammer is actually number three right now in win rate at a fifty four point six percent. Win rate, but only 9.8% popularity. So, probably mostly those players who were good with her before just now. Oh, you get a baseline range now. So, 9.8 is a little high. If you're at like a 1 or 2% play rate, I could see like, oh, she's the dedicated mains. Nine, she's gaining popularity. Yeah, I mean, the lowest. In popularity right now is Gaul and Cho at 1.6%. Uh, keep in mind, this is all Hero League stuff. So, But yeah, uh, let's actually move on to... I wanted to really quickly talk about this before we get into the PTR, but the North American Heroes Regional Championship is coming up this weekend. Eight teams are going to be facing off against each other at PAX in Seattle. And the winner... Depending on who it is, <laughs> we'll go on to BlizzCon and represent North America in the uh, in international scene. So we have Group A, Murloc Geniuses, Denial Esports, Dumpster, Dumpster Tier Superstars. God, I hate that name. Team name change, uh, all in Group A. I predict Murloc Geniuses and Denial Esports coming out of this group. Denial looked really good in qualifiers, and they also added... I dream to their roster, so there are three fifths Cloud Nine's old roster now, and they look scary. Uh, mm-hmm. What do you guys think? Uh, as far I as think, Group A goes, yeah, yeah, let's go with Group A. Um, I'm gonna. S- I would probably say Murloc in denial. I know denial had a kind of weak showing at the last regional, which I was. I don't know. I I feel like was more a bad day and. Weak synergy. I think those players are pretty high caliber. Uh, I think if there's a team, I think Dumpster Tier will pull it out. Team, I don't know. I mean, Team Main Change is good. They've been in the top eight for a while, but I, uh, I, I think Murlocs is getting out for sure. I think Denial and Dumpster Tier are fighting for second spot. 
Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, Zex, how about you? Uh, I don't think Murloc's going to take it this time. I think it's going to be uh, Dumpster and Denial. And Dumpster getting out and Denial taking second. Um, <clears throat> you know, some teams just ride real high real quick, and then they kind of you know, have an off tournament. Let's you know take example of Vox Nihili. They had that really spectacular mm -hmm. tournament, and then they didn't even qualify the last... Yeah. You know, yeah. To be so, fair, they got to the qualification match, the last two qualifiers, and lost two one in both of those. And the one they lost to Astral Authority was ridiculously close. So, yeah, I, I think Vox still it can be there. It's just the tournament structure does need to be there f to support them uh, during this BlizzCon period, where basically nothing is going to be happening for North American didn't teams. Didn't they put out a vague tweet about yes. having... Yes. <laughs> There's a very vague tweet. Now, I actually know nothing about it, but they said to basically stay tight. <laughs> yeah. Well, they to have some tournaments for non-BlizzCon qualified mm -hmm. teams in kind of the fall, winter time, so the teams aren't just, like, doing nothing. Yeah. So that'll be important for teams like Vox and whoever doesn't make it, really all of them. Balrog fan, are you going to continue to ride the, the Caterpillar train and go with the uh, Merlock Geniuses in this group? Uh, no, I'm kind of with Willie here. Uh, the tape's out. Um, a lot of teams have had time to kind of look at what they did to win that last tournament to ride so high. I, I think this will be Denial, and Team Name Change will be the team that will come out and uh, put in some work. Cool. Uh, and Artifice? Is, um, is this one post-patch or pre-patch? This is pre next patch, so it's the patch that we're patch. currently playing on live right now. I like to see Dumpster take it up just because of the outlier, and I like things like that. I think it keeps it shaken. I see team name change in the same way I see Astral Authority, where they're a good team, but I don't see them riding high as much as the others do. Like they're there, they're the standard. They have their ups, but they're more of a stable team. So probably denial for me. For sure. I mean, they they've been looking really good lately, uh, and we'll have to see how they do this weekend. In Group B, we have Gale Force Esports, Team Neventic, Astro Authority, and Imported Support. That is a scarily stacked group. <sighs> I it, even said though, I I've got to go with the the favorites here: Gale Force and Neventic. I I see easily getting out of this group. Astral is really good, and especially with at the addition of Equinox, but I just don't think they're at that level that GFE and Neventic are at right now. And Imported Support, this is the first land for a lot of these players. I mean, outside of Shot, I don't think any of them have been to a live event that I can think of. Uh, Shot was, was uh, on ASU for Dorm, uh, which they took this year. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts on who might be advancing from this Who'd group. Who replaced Fan on the Pentic? We had uh, Jason. Uh, Jason. Type, 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 type. Yeah, type. Ar Artifice. Artifice, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Jason replaced uh, him on that team. I think I'm going to say Gale Force and Ash will get out, with Gale Force being my favorite to win the whole thing. I think they were a good team, and they have Fan now. Mm -hmm. And Fan is probably one of the best players in the region. Yeah, I mean, nothing yeah. against Rafflecopter, but if you can replace someone as good as Rafflecopter with someone Fan. even better yeah. in Fan, like, that gives them so much more flexibility. And Fan is just phenomenal on Abathur, and we could see them using that here on a map like Cursed Hollow. Yeah, it's got to be the favorites here. I, I mean, I really think that this is uh, Neventic and Gale Force. Easy. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm actually going... I am literally going diametrically opposed to both of you guys. I, I, I'm... Because I, I made a weird call last time with, like, Vox. With yep. the Vox pick. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty much right on it. So this time I'm saying imported support because no. No, nobody knows them. So you're Nobody knows upset. But they're yeah. not like brand new. Nobody, they they, they might not be brand new, but you know this is their first land. They're they're essentially nobody knows them. 
you know, they don't know how they're going to react, how they're going to perform at a land. Nobody knew how Vox was going to uh, perform at a land. You know, they've seen they've seen Vox, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going with the I'm going with actually going with the underdog picks here. I'm going with imported and and uh, Astro. I don't think Neventic's getting out. <laughs> That'll be interesting to see. <laughs> Remember, I called Vox. I'm right. They, I called Vox as well, by the way. <laughs> Did you? I don't remember that. Part. Yes. I saw a good reason to call Vox. I didn't have faith, though. I see no reason to call important support. I called more like geniuses, and everyone laughed at me. So. I know. <laughs> I, I, I totally did, too. But I laughed, we'll I'll, I'll take the blame for that. <laughs> and uh, Artifice, who we got as a uh, catch you <laughs> take a step there. I'm so uh, sorry. It's my cup. Oh, man. Um, uh, it's hard to say with that one. There's, there's a lot of powerhouse on that. I'd like to say I want to see imported support, but I don't want Willie to get a big head. So <laughs> I'm going to go with that, Bill first. That's too late. It's already happened. <laughs> but it, it's just one of those things. Like You want the upset. You want the strange plays because that, that's what makes it the most exciting for everything. You want that... 5 HP escape. You want that ridiculous play that works because that's what draws you in. For sure. And yeah. just really quickly around the horn here, uh, I think Gale Force is going to take this and take that second slot for BlizzCon. Charlie? Um, mm, come back to me. I'm undecided. Okay. Zex? Astral? Artifice? Uh, for the whole thing? The whole thing. Gets that trip to BlizzCon. Oh. That's too hard. <laughs> um, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to say Gale Force. Okay. If I had to pick one out of the eight, Gale Force. I have faith. Carl? I will say Gale Force. I think Denial's going to be in the final with him. Okay. Charlie, you've had some time to think. Neventic. Okay. So those the are our predictions. Skin, that the it. Love choice. There we go. We're, those Look are our predictions in. for <laughs> packs. Uh, now we've all had a chance to read through all these PTR notes. They came out pretty late last night. I was talking to a couple of Heroes people at the event last night, and the, the patch came out a little later than they were expecting it to. But this includes the first StarCraft map in our uh, event here. I forget the name of it, but uh, Braxis Holdout is the, the battleground here. Looks really awesome. I haven't had a chance to play the PCR. I just want an open discussion on what you think about these patch notes. There's a whole lot here. Um, let me really quickly just start off the discussion with the change to the uh, globes here. They're being dropped from sticking around for eight seconds to six seconds. I know this really is going to affect those heroes like Chen uh, taking the the, the uh, globe talent. Zex, do you think this is a huge impact, especially combined with the reduced mount speed on uh, all heroes now? Uh, I, I think so. Uh, the, redu the reduced mount speed is essentially important because it's going <sighs> to... How to put it? It's going to reduce... Uh, chase down like where you know a team fight breaks off the winner of the team fight you know keeps pressing forward the, the losers retreat and you know everybody mounts up and tries to get away well this makes it a lot slower and you have to kind of weigh that especially if someone on the, the team you're chasing has like a really good split, split pusher take for instance Zagara or Sylvanas or something like that. You have to wait. Do we go stop the split push, or do we, you know, go for that, you know, extra kill and, you know, right off of that? So, but like a lot of the things that I've seen in here, like especially some of the baselines, like I'm happy to see them. I'm also annoyed because, right? Let's take Johanna. Mm -hmm. Night takes pawn is now baseline with her. Why wouldn't you just give Chen <laughs> Here comes, balance folks. baseline? You guys have had <laughs> this data for like a year. Oh, like, how, he made it what 20, 22 minutes? 
22 minutes. How, he well, made it about 22 <laughs> seconds into the PTR yeah. discussion. Yeah. Like, how, <laughs> how have, like, the past week, 85% of Chen players over, like, 5,000 games took brew balance. That's an overwhelming majority of players. Mm -hmm. It's got the, it's clearly got the highest win rate on Chen. Blizzard, you guys have been, this isn't a new development. You haven't, like, suddenly buffed Brew Balance, and, like, players were like, oh, wow, Brew Balance is good. No, this has been going on for, like, a year, guys. <laughs> Just baseline it. Take away Regen mm -hmm. Master. That's a fair trade, in my opinion. And just let it go. So go all Elsa sense. or Anna or, well, I don't know which one it is. I've never watched the movie, but just... It's not it, guy. Come on, Blizzard! You drive, you're driving <laughs> up a wall. Like, ch no, seriously. Out of all the major patches that have hit mm -hmm. here this past year, Chen was like part of one, and I think that was the beginning of the year. He, he had a small tweak to uh, his um, his his chug, but ooh. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on! Yeah, guys. that was the last thing that they changed on him at all. Yeah, that, yeah that's the last thing. It was the change to to his, his trait. Come on, Blizzard! You're killing me here. Like the one, the one hero I really want to play because uh, he's not good. I'm I gonna told you, it's it. not time for his expansion pack yet. <laughs> it's true. When the Warcraft event comes around, <laughs> you'll see. You know what? Maybe that'll be the announcement at BlizzCon. Chen gets a buff. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I'm gonna bring I, Willie on stage. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> He'll be the new red shirt guy. Oh god! Oh man! I, like, I agree with the changes, like especially to the tank, to the tanks, and the changes to stuff like resistant and stuff like that. Um, and I'll talk a, a bit more once we get a little more into it. But like, they're like eh, they either have a really big rework for Chen coming up, or I they forgot that Chen exists. I think it's I think it's they they forgot Chen exists. It's you know, possible. You get, you get so much more excitement out of like Murden and you know ETC, even Diablo, like Suplex City for days. You know, than you do watching a Chen jump at people and then barrel them. In a random direction. <sighs> okay, I'm spent. Go okay, uh, so that's that's those changes there. Uh, I really was interested in this change and what you guys thought about this. Mercenaries are getting their spawns changed. Some of them are getting changed. Um, the only ones that are getting changed are the sappers and doubloon pirates. They're changing to 90 seconds on respawn and knights and fallen shaman to 150 seconds everything else remains changed but i didn't notice this reading through the other day and i just now saw this captured mercenaries will no longer grant experience when killed so i believe that means you don't get experience for killing the enemy's mercenaries right that's how i'd interpret that yeah let's see so yeah. it used to be a sense. net zero experience gain because you would get it for capping the mercs and they'd get it for killing them Mm -hmm. um, that's that's kind of how I feel when I kill Tyrion and he blows up and I die. <laughs> yeah, uh, I like this. Uh, I also like the change. Um, it does make Sky Temple interesting because that first temple is spawns when two thirty. Oh, no, so it's the it, I guess the it's the second temple and that's by like five minutes. So they'll yeah, be it's like they'll between be four and five I think. But the, like I guess the first like curse or the first like tribute or whatever kind of thing where you try and get you know pushes going on one side of the map or the other it has to be siege giants now basically knights won't be up mm -hmm. you, know, you can't respond with those and sometimes you won't even be able to like get them immediately after the tribute depending on how long that takes but yeah exactly it'll be i don't think it'll be huge but it'll be interesting yeah it's definitely interesting i I don't know how big of an impact it'll have on the game itself, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of changes to heroes, and we're not going to go through all of them. We I'm not going to drone on about... <laughs> Did we mention the move speed change last week? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we didn't mention like specific hero ones, like 
Zagar and Rhaegar's, but we did go over the basics of okay. what it was and why it was. Um, one minor thing that's uh, it's important to me, but uh, I don't know how you guys feel about it, is the sorting, where you will now have the ability to toggle how you want your heroes sorted in ranked and draft, so you're not looking for that band that you don't play and it's like way down on your list on like mm-hmm. the second page. You can now put it how you want. It. <laughs> you're you're frantically trying to type in the hero name and you misspell it. And you're like, well, yeah. I'm screwed. Yeah. You like can here. mark heroes as favorites now too, which is pretty cool for that process. Uh, mm-hmm. if, if there's heroes in the meta, you can mark them as favorite and unmark them later if they fall out of like the band mm-hmm. band pick meta, which is pretty cool. One thing I'm really excited for is that when you go into triad mode now, the bo- there will be a boss camp, so you can actually practice various um, strategies for downing the boss solo and at what levels and what um, ability rotations you would need to do that, which is something you had no real way to practice. Uh, You can actually try stuff now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So So I can practice soloing I can practice soloing the boss with uh, Malfurion now. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) It is possible. I've seen it. You need treants? Yeah. You do need treants, but yeah, like... It's it's completely possible and absolutely idiotic to watch. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, coming out with this event as well is another uh, little kind of activity at the start of, of start of matches. Zelnaga Artifact Hunt will be coming, and this actually sounds really cool. And the reward is, I I think, really cool. So the daily quest is going to be you collect twelve artifact artifact pieces during a single game. That rewards you a one-day stim pack. So every day you can pick up that stim pack and take advantage of that. There's a whole event quest uh, where you collect 150 artifact pieces over the timeline of Machines of War. And you get a Zeldnaga artifact portrait. So, yay, more portraits to choose from. Uh, But basically, SCVs and artifact pieces will have a 50% chance to spawn at the start of the game. If any players on the team have not yet completed their daily. And it says the task will be difficult to accomplish alone. Teammates must work together to eliminate the SCVs and reclaim the artifact pieces. <laughs> so, what do you SCVs. think about this? Is this better than previous events? I personally think so, and I'm looking forward to this actually a little bit. What, you don't miss the monkey? Chase the monkey? No. It's no. more interactive than running around. You're like just following a monkey. I mean, slightly, <laughs> right? You're running around, killing a thing, remounting, going to the next thing, or just you know walking, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, the stim pack is interesting. Uh, it gives you experience boost, which didn't before. Uh, if you play, you know, only a game or two a day, you get less gold. Uh, if you play like three or four or more than that, you get more gold than before. So it has higher potential, but you get less out of just like logging in each day. Mm-hmm. So for people who are busy or don't really have the time or just kind of are casual players, I think it's a little worse. But mm-hmm. you can't really quantify experience either, right? If you yeah. like, really want to hit 10 on a bunch of characters, then this is really good for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it just tries to encourage people to play more games uh, as this event is going on. It uh, also gives incentive to pay attention when your game loads up. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Uh, so you're not all tabbed out like me all the time. Uh, <laughs> my bathroom breaks. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but the the really big meat, I think, of this patch is a lot... There's a couple of reworks here. We, we had known about the Vala rework, and we kind of briefly mentioned that. But there was one that Blizzard kind of alluded to on Reddit, one of the developers did. And we now know who that is, and it's the Butcher. And he got some serious, serious changes... Uh, like I said earlier, I'm not going to go through all these. It's a, it's a giant laundry list of changes, but it looks like we can go really over making... his basic stuff. Yeah, do the talent rework, but uh, so like the stats, his base AD was nerfed, which is like whoa, that's that's a good rework for an auto attack hero. <laughs> 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 but yeah. then his uh, trait is different completely. Like throw out the old trait. Quest nearby minions drop one fresh meat, and heroes drop fri- five fresh meat when they die. So heroes used to drop three, I think. Now it's five. Mm-hmm. You can pick up fresh meat to gain one basic attack damage per meat. Can hold to 125 meat, not 25. You drop up to 10 fresh meat upon dying. So that's 
already, you know, it used to be 25 for 25% bonus AD, and you lost all of it upon dying unless you took the talent that made you lose half. Mm-hmm. And then it's because of the quest talent, quest trade. This is the first time I think they've done a quest trade. Um, it is. After acquiring 125 pieces of fresh meat so that, that's fully stacked, gain an additional 100 basic attack damage, you get 225 basic extra AD, and 25% increased attack speed, and you no longer lose fresh meat on death. So that's a lot of damage. A lot of damage. I don't know what his AD actually is at like level 16 or 20 or whatever, but... I mean, that's 225 basic attack damage. I mean, that's like what Rainer's is. They've turned him back into a train, basically. Yes. He's the train. And all he really was, I, and I think this feels a little better, because he, he was a pub-stomping hero because he could blow up a game early for the enemy teams who didn't know how to deal with him, because he, all of his strength was in the early game. Uh, Bad Butcher would die early and lose that advantage. This uh, kind of... It's it's telling you to play a lot smarter as the butcher. Pick your spots really, and then and then get all your damage in for for the late game because that's where you're going to really be um, viable and and you're going to feel that power. No, nothing about these these changes tell me to play careful early game. <laughs> oh so, no, it's seriously. totally aggressive. It's totally oh, he, aggressive. He's this, aggressive. All these changes, like I'm not playing for late game. I'm playing for right now game. <laughs> like I want to hit that 125 as quickly as possible, you know. Yeah, but if his power also... isn't there to get it done, you, you have to farm some waves. And... That's He's true. I, you farm what, me and Jim, what me and Jimmy did that one. <laughs> oh my gosh! And that was with bad butcher. Imagine if we were doing that with this good butcher now. Like yeah. you, you would have had 125 <laughs> stacks just off that Rainer alone. <laughs> oh, like, hold on, Rainer. let me do the math on that. That dude died 19 times <laughs> times 5. You would have had 95 stacks of fresh meat just off that Rainer. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's not oh, man. everything else and all the other kills and just the general yeah, like you you duo all you need to do with Butcher to win is duo with somebody. Mm. Duo with a stunner. Burden, whoever. Like he will just destroy and just get it done. Speaking of doing, though, I want to kind of call out as well, Butcher's Brand is getting added functionality. It's, its duration is decreasing a little bit. Its mana is increasing. But this add functionality is quite scary, I think. Uh, your basic attacks against enemy heroes that are affected by Butcher's Brand will increase the duration of it by half a second. That's on the... Wait, 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 wait. wait. Yes. Sad? Autoing somebody who has Butcher's Brand on them increases the duration of Butcher's Brand by half a second. So imagine this. You've completed your fresh meat. You quest. just broke him. <laughs> you already have a pretty high attack speed. Now you have 25% increased attack you speed. You keep it up for a long time. And every time you hit somebody, and you're going to have to... This, Butcher, is gonna gonna require, go Butcher is going to require disengage tools. Like, so, like yeah. hard disengage. I've been playing a couple games on the PTR, right? And Butcher's been a nightmare. Yeah. But I have yet to play a game with a t- support. Not named Medivh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's Len a specialist. Uh, my PTR games have all been... Both teams have a Butcher, a Vala, and an Ariel. That's it. Everything else is random. <laughs> <laughs> but... I don't know, it's I, I haven't seen what he looks like when there's an Uther there to stun him and Divine Shield me when he charges in. Or to Divine Shield him, right? It goes both ways. So, I don't have a... He seems really good from anecdotal three-game evidence. Mm-hmm. But it's not Hero League and like a full, a real team comp built around and against him. So I can't... Uh, it His talent tree, I would say, is more entertaining. There's less generic talents... There's some more synergies and stuff that goes really well together. Um, his own version of Spell Shield. So I think he feels a lot better. He's a lot more like healthy gameplay design-wise. I can't swear to his power. Yeah. Aisling brought up a good point. Um, the Butcher's rework with Morales and the new grenade launch, where you can launch it behind the team, pull him forward, he charges... He doesn't have to dive as far. Everybody wins except for the other team. Yeah, yeah and just Morales and Butcher is just going to be idiotic in general, <laughs> especially with this this uh, Butcher brand change. You know, at mm-hmm. ten he's going to have like 
That person's going to die. So for yes. for people not familiar with the change to displacement displacement grenade, basically you can hit the button again to trigger the explosion and the knockback. Uh, that's before it hits max range because it'll just explode at max range like it does normally right now. But this allows you to have a, a lot more control over how you're using displacement grenade. And like Elena was uh, alluding to, this could set up some really cool kill opportunities. Uh, I don't know if this will necessarily bring her back into the meta, but it, it it's possible with some really skilled players to kind of bring up her stock. I feel like it also puts her in a, another niche because now the other thing the grenade does is it doesn't hit minions and it goes through walls. It goes through the gate instead of bouncing off the gate. So you can actually do like all the lightning charges, the puffer fish, the grenade actually does what a grenade's supposed to do instead of bouncing off the first minion. Aha, everyone hates the medic. Yeah. It's a pretty nice change. So my question is, uh, at level 7, the Butcher gets that has the access to that new talent, Meat Shield, correct? Where basically yep. it grants him a Spell Shield. Does that is that different from the changes to Spell Shield, or can you also toggle that one on and off to be able to... Spell Shield has been removed from Butcher. Okay, so the, the Meat Shield triggering the proc, procs basically gives it the gives him the old version of Spell Shield. Yes. And the new version of Spell Shield, you can just toggle on and off. Uh, yeah. To get it on the abilities you wanted to hit. Yeah. Okay. So, that's, is that in this... Where is that listed? Uh, the list is right up in the, above the heroes and the basic abilities um, okay. un, under talents, where Spell Shield... Uh, oh, yes. For better controls of which bil abilities you mitigate. We're going to see that at the pro level quite a bit. That's yes. A, quite a high... These, yeah. these two changes have been asked for by the pro level for a long time. And they just... This is... Because... See, what happened previously was, like, Vol throws out a multi-shot, which does, like, 100 damage. And everybody's spell shield's gone. And then you get, you know, chain bombs and pyroblast and whatever. And, it, like, it did, you know, it saved me 50 health. What do I care? Uh, but now you can say spell shield, like, alright, I'm jumping into four of them, I'm going to activate spell shield. Or I see this big thing coming for me, I'm going to activate spell shield. Same thing with imposing presence. Alright, if Rainer's not on me, I don't care. You know, if I'm just getting whacked by Muradin, big whoop. But, you know, so just, I always like adding toggles and, like, you have to activate this. And you get more power during the activatable, but, you know, and it, it ends up being a buff if you're really good and a nerf if you're not. <laughs> I mean, most people, let's be honest, most people weren't taking spell shield anyways, and if you know... Like, because it's a 13 pick, you're like, all right, well, I'm the guy who gets to uh, eat every pyroblast because this Kelthus has decided he doesn't like me. Um, you now have, if you have an option to take spell shield, you, you have a lot better chance at mitigating that damage and surviving, which, I mm -hmm. mean, it can't, it can't be that difficult to manage um, compared mm -hmm. to having no control over it at all. Yeah. So, I, I, th I think it's, that might be one of the more impactful changes just on any. I mean, across the board, because that, we're going to see a lot of that. Um, so, and as you know, um, not dying and dying is, is or uh, the difference between not dying and dying <laughs> is important in uh -huh. uh, Heroes of the Storm. This, I mean, Blizz, BlizzCon will be on or after this patch, right? Oh, after. 100%. Yeah. After. So I'm excited for that change. Like, mm -hmm. the most as far as competitive goes. I don't, I mean, we'll see what Butcher and Vala and buffs and nerfs bring into the meta. You know, there's no way to tell, really. But this one will stick, and this will be impactful on the biggest stage of the year. So, so I'm, I like this. Mm -hmm. and another small one I noticed that ties in with the timers that you mentioned earlier on the camps is there's at least three characters who have had bribe removed. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like that is also going to have not a big effect, but it's also going to be like less sneaking camps and more actual like effort. Okay, or who are we sacrificing for this instead of, oh, you've got coins, go take care of that. It takes three seconds, you're done, come mm -hmm. back. I think it was more on heroes that they had it on, but they wanted to do this this talent cleanup here because just people were not taking them. Uh, the specific heroes were Rainer, uh, Nazebo, and Falstad. Fall said you never took. Oh, and Asma as well. So four. Uh, Brightwing. Brightwing uh, got her Bright, specific. Okay, 
that is what I wanted to go to next, though, because she got a very no different one. Oh, and uh, Falstead got his own bride version, too. Oh, did he? Yeah. I. Yep. How did I miss that? Okay, let's talk about that real quickly as I scroll up these so massive his changes is, here. Yeah, there we go. killed near you, grant a stack of bribe. Use 20 stacks to bribe a mercenary, instantly defeating them. Yeah. And permanently increasing the damage of lightning rod by 5%. Does not work on bosses. Maximum of 80 stacks. So that's bribe stacks, right? So there's no yeah. actual stack limit to lightning rod. Not that you're really going to bribe like 40 camps in a game. <laughs> but still. <laughs> yeah. They're, it's very feasible that you could get a 25 to 40% increase on your yeah. on your one of your just basic abilities. Just for... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got ruined in a 1v1 on the PTR earlier by a false dad who went like a W build, and I'm assuming, I didn't look specifically, but he must have had this. I saw a lot of mm-hmm. W icons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and Mer- uh, I'm sorry, Brightwings probably sounds the most functional just become, because yeah. she's getting that based off of things she does passively and yes. is expected to do, which is heal her team. So every time, um, I want to get the exact wording correct it's here. Every time Soothing Mist, heal, Soothing Mist heals an allied hero, excluding yourself, you gain a stack of bribe, uh, 20 stacks of bribe mercenary. It doesn't work on bosses, max of 80 stacks. Okay, so yeah, just, just heal people. Now, if you heal five people, is that five stacks? That's four stacks. It doesn't count yourself. Unless count. you have Vikings around, then you can get up to like yeah. stacks. Wow. Yeah, but it should count for every hero you heal. Yeah. Does it so only count one as Chogol? Probably. Uh, no, I, I think they're actually know. coded as two people on top of each other, so you'll probably get two. But okay, only- so now, <laughs> the, the the particular bribe change, like they gave Nova bribe. Now, uh, this is a level four talent, uh, covert mission. Enemy, uh, every enemy minion near me gives you a stack, or that dies near you gets a stack of bribe. Hero takedowns give you ten stacks, though. So you're rewarded for doing what Nova needs to do. Twenty-five stacks to bribe, hundred stacks max. If you bribe a camp, that camp respawns fifty percent faster. You have to entirely defeat the camp. Yeah, you yeah, have, you have you to entirely. Just... You, yeah, you have to burn the but whole yes. the fifty or one hundred stacks on it. That's why, like, you you get your camp back faster when you mm-hmm. use this. So, mm-hmm. like, and four is it, kind of a dead talent because it's all uh, hollow uh, talents. So yeah. this is actually somewhat feasible. I mean, there's there's a there's a couple of ho- hollow talents that are really good. The extended duration one I really really like. I almost always pick that one or the reduced mana cost hologram. But this is, in my opinion for Nova is incredibly feasible just because the amount of bribe stacks you get for hero takedowns, which is, especially in pub stopping, that's what you should be doing. You should be a pain in everybody's butt with Nova. And what's the one thing Nova doesn't have? Lane pressure. You know what bribe has? Lane Lane pressure. pressure. (laughs) (laughs) Lane pressure. Got it. (laughs) Good job, Charlie. Thank you. Proud of you. Good job. But yeah, like this, this puts a new spin on Nova, and I'm really happy about this particular change. And I think I, I like the, all the changes, to be honest. And I don't think any of them shouldn't be discounted. Mm-hmm. As you know, Falstead, you get you get a huge buff to your uh, your W every time. Nova, you get more camps in the long run. Uh, Brightwing just gets bribe stacks for existing around somebody. She probably will get them <laughs> faster than the others. Yeah, so definitely. Um, bribe pretty often with her. I feel like I'm missing one. I think that's it. It was just those. those yeah. Yeah. So, but like, I, li- I actually do enjoy these particular changes because mm-hmm. bribe was such an undervalued talent. You know, mm-hmm. because it was really, really annoying to build those stacks if you weren't Vikings. You know, yeah. it's, also, it's also stacks make it... were like really annoying just because of the sheer amount you needed to just bribe a camp. You actually you had to you had to be playing Meepo essentially to effectively utilize bribe on Vikings. <laughs> Jimmy yeah. got it. Yep. Uh, but also, I find really interesting. I know we're we're jumping around a whole lot, but uh, on Karazim, they're actually replacing Relentless with Sixth Sense. 
which now when you're stunned or rooted you block all basic attacks reducing their damage by 50 percent for four seconds okay the wording on this that is really weird well, okay the, kind the, of a baseline change to all the stuff because there's yeah. a majority of the old relentless like talents yeah. of the game um but most of them were getting 25 percent damage reduction for three or four seconds mm -hmm. instead of it okay it yeah the, the wording the wording is wrong on the ptr <laughs> the wording's wrong on the ptr it doesn't mean you block all base attacks you reduce their damage yeah. by 50 percent for four seconds so charism specifically gets an aa version of it mm -hmm. uh, everyone most other people just get a general damage uh nerf so this is interesting especially because the healer likes to go in the middle um, so I guess it makes him even better against auto attack comps because against mages he gets blown up anyways, and now he gets blown up more. And to so. get good numbers out of them, he has to mix it up a bit. So this will help with his survivability, obviously, even for for when he's trying to get those extra heals pushed out. That seems to be what a lot of the talents changes are between him and the butcher and the less speed and the more effort for Bride. It's all more of like a survival thing instead of just. Everybody dies all at once, and it snowballs from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is it's probably a good change for the game. Um, you should have the option to be able to survive if uh, if you make the right choices and play well. Not like, well, we got caught in this combo. We're all dead. Mm. Yeah. The um, the PTR new map. Um, I only played it twice. Um, hopefully, gonna play more. But the one thing I did notice about the beacons is. The timers are very quick. Like the old version of Shrines, where if you died once, by the time you got back, it was done. It was over. They already got everything. Yeah. I think that might be adjusted in time. Maybe not. It is possible to get it back, but it's like a once and done thing. As soon as you have both, it's like a speed cannon. It doesn't stop. Mm hmm. So, yeah, I, I played on it. It was pretty fun. Uh, it threw me off the first time when they kind of, like, you rotate which one of your lanes has Zerg in it. Mm -hmm. So, like, the first time you might push top and there just pushes bottom, and the next time you just push bottom and there just goes top and it just keeps swapping around. I so, think it's good, though. If they kind of learn their lesson from Haunted Mind's Golem only being yeah. in one lane. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so Battlefield, they solved it by the one with the most structures remaining. This one just alternates naturally. So, um... You know, it's. I think it, it's cool. Uh, the Zerg rush itself is pretty lame if you don't get like at least fifty percent. Mm -hmm. It's. I mean, almost does nothing if you have a really small one. Uh, but the full push hurts. You know, you have to respond to it, and especially late game. It's. You know, my team. We've been winning most of the game. We overstepped. We got wiped at their core. They got the whole push, and they were pushing our keep. And we went in and we fought in the middle of the entire, like, Zerg horde and got mm -hmm. massacred. <laughs> yeah. And then they won the game. And it's like their, their core was on 9% from our last push. And then they took that, they got the big Zerg rush, we tried to fight in the in it, and it's we lost. All right, so don't underestimate this thing. <laughs> it's like trying to fight under a Punisher. It just doesn't look as scary. Oh, wow. It's a, it's so, a fun, fun Carl. aspect. Question. Question. For yep. You. Is it why, and, why did I throw? I, wait, Artifice, did you lie to us earlier? Mm hmm. You said you didn't get to play the new map. I played, <laughs> let's see, I'll show you. It was but, uh, one game out of six quick matches was the new map. Mm, and the mm -hmm. rest were Dragonshire and Infernal Shrines. Okay, so then I got two questions. Uh, Carl <laughs> and Elena, do you think this map will end up being part of the competitive meta in the way that the other two-lane maps have been part of the competitive meta. I think so. I think it's... It provides a lot of... It, like... In, uh, what's it called? Battlefield can be like a PvE race, right? It can be like, I'm going to pick Lunara and Sylvanas and Hammer and thrall and just like mow this down as fast as i possibly can and just give me a little victory yes and toronto as your solo support with thrall as your tank yes um and just and then you win because you have sylvanas and a full power uh immortal that's game you can't do that you have to actually win a team fight 
um, and you have to push them off both objectives, which early game is just like, I don't know, early game kind of feels like the first Haunted Minds phase, where you keep running back and fighting over and over, which is kind of fun and kind of obnoxious. I don't know. <laughs> um, right, it's not, right. You know, it's it, but it, it's two places. You get kind of small skirmishes. I think it's a lot of fun. I don't think, from what I've seen, it's like a super broken or cheesy map. It it feels good. Yeah. Um. I still think with the competitive scene, I still think the timers would need to be adjusted a little bit. But I have seen that it can balance. Like one of our pushes was a hundred percent versus ninety eight percent. So it was a super close race. Everybody had to go defend, so it does give a little bit of pullback. So, but the the team fights on it are weird because you have to have both to raise your beacon. You can go back and forth all you want, but you have to have both, or else it doesn't do anything. So one team can slowly build, and then everybody dies, and it's at like forty five percent, and the other team can just get both, and in ten seconds they have a hundred percent. So it's very reliant on staying alive and staying on both points. Yeah, similar to how Battlefield was first played, um, you'll want heroes that are good at sustained fights and are good at skirmishes, right? Before it became a DPS race, you know, people would grab, like, Malfurion, and people would grab, uh, I don't know, what other heroes that are good in, like, long drawn-out fights. You know, that's, that's good on this. So until f somebody finds another way to cheese the new map, which I don't see a, a clear way to do, you know. Lily hype. This will be your Lily map. hype. There we go. I, I, think, I think, you know what, you guys laugh, but I think she's going to be needed versus Butcher with blinds. I she, haven't seen anything else stop him so far. Well, Butcher's she, just becoming the new Illidan now. Yeah. She's better than... A lot of people give her credit for. I'd I'd rather have her than a couple of the supports in a, in a lot of cases. Um, Ariel, <laughs> especially for those very long fights. I'd so rather much have hate her... for Ariel. Jeez, <laughs> I like Ariel. I'd rather have her against Butcher than like Karazim and Rhaegar, who don't actually offer any CC. Sure. But I'd take an Uther against Butcher all day, every day. Yeah. I, the stunts. I, I think Uther is still the most versatile support. You can always count on his numbers. He's he's good in almost every situation. He's he's just a really strong support choice. He's the light bringer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Willie, what was your other question? I think he meant he had a question for two people. N no, oh. no, no. I had a question. I had a question for both of you, and now I don't remember what the second question is, and I'll probably end up blurting <laughs> out during the second point because <laughs> the first question, you know, took. Lane so, pressure. So no, no, that had nothing to do with lane pressure. No, that had nothing to do with it. It was... It, was... I, I worked the first time I had to try it again. Something about the new map. He'll remember next week and he'll write yeah. it down. No, I won't. Yes. Probably <laughs> not that organized. Uh, okay. Exactly. Really briefly, Carl, I know you've at least seen her on the PTR. I don't know if you've played... Uh, Vala yet, but Vala's getting he a complete rework. What? He played all three builds, buddy. Okay, that's right. This is our, this is our Vala, um, Vala, Vala Sword. Expert. Vala was my first game. Yeah, so I, we're not going to go over this giant laundry list of changes she's going, but it seems like she's moving more towards an auto attack uh, style here. What do I, you think of Vala from the PTR that you've uh, been able to play? So, I don't know about her auto attack build. I need to play it more. Um, there's a post on Reddit about how they nerfed the auto attack build. Uh, I don't really, I don't, their logic doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think her auto attacks are better if you can keep hatred up. A lot of her auto attack talents are now based on hatred and not just like, oh, your auto attacks do more damage now. Um, so it's, you know, it's harder to be good with auto attack follow because you have to have sustained damage and now your hatred stacks fall off all at once. So, like, it's a significantly more difficult build now. Um, so, I don't know. I think it can still be good. Uh, I, I like the new talents. You know, they're, they're really interesting and they offer a lot. Um, it felt decent. Uh, I think I picked the wrong 20. And mm -hmm. I got wrecked in a couple late-game team fights and we lost. Um, 
multi-shot build feels there i mean it wasn't a full multi-shot it was kind of like a reduced cooldown on your abilities build that i took um which felt pretty decent uh, i still like rush shot got kind of nerfed but uh with all the with the cooldown reduction you can get from arsenal uh it's still pretty good plus i fresh shot got moved to a more pickable uh tier at 16 with so much stuff getting removed on 16 with her losing yeah. blood executioner tumble yeah so the uh, the other the other I mean the thing it competes with if you're going auto attack you have to go seething hatred uh, because which is a new talent which says basic attacks now grant two stacks of hatred and the time after attacking for hatred attacks falls off increases from four to six seconds that is huge uh, yeah so I was talking about how much her build relies on hatred and that's just like oh all the problems you were having for the first fifteen levels they're gone <laughs> so I think it's uh really good the the auto attack i guess the auto attack build does i think all of her builds kind of really only kick in 16 and 20 how was the loss of vault was my biggest question of uh, of just it feel like she lost all of her movement tools yeah i mean no blank vault functionality is just causes your next basic attack to deal 80 or 50 I mean, it still it still moves you Oh, it still dashes. Yeah, it's not just, just like, like a, functionality. They just like turned it. Yeah, to a, this this is like bonus functionality. This isn't like uh, <laughs> we removed vault. Um, yeah, so I thought it just know. jumps up and down in place when you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crossbows loaded. <laughs> I went too deep a couple times because I got cocky playing Vala with a three level mm -hmm. lead, and then we lost. <laughs> oh. but, I mean, it looks like they got rid of the gosh. double vault. Here. Yeah, they did, and that makes yeah, me sad because that was one of my favorite builds on Vala mm -hmm. was the like the chase everything build. Yeah, butterflies, yeah the chase, butterflies. The hungry, <laughs> I like I liked the hungering arrow build. I was a big, that was actually the first build I ever wrote. Shoot, that was my least favorite build. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I loved it. You're a bad player. <laughs> That's why, like point case in point, you had a three level lead and blew it. Yeah, um, no, that, was, but, that game was my fault. <laughs> oh my gosh. But, like, that was, I, I don't know, some of these talents for Hungering Arrows kind of silly. Like, cost-effective materials, like, renamed a Monster Hunter. Uh, um, but, like, that seems really dumb. <laughs> like, they changed its functionality to, God, what is in my eyeballs? Um, they changed <laughs> the functionality to prioritize heroes. And then you give them this this talent that makes it do more damage to minions. Like, do you want her to split push? What are you guys trying to go for here? If you want to do wave clear with follow, you go W build. I don't know why that talent exists. Yeah, I don't know either. You know, same thing. Like, I, I just... Uh, I don't know. You get Caltrops. Like or not Caltrops. Uh, Arsenal. And you're, you're good. Yeah. Well, at level one, if you... Th I think that that monster hunter might help on certain maps where you know like you might need it against you know like a punisher push or things like that that's true but it's, punisher, it's good punisher isn't gooder. it isn't, is gooder hold on you're gooder <laughs> is punisher classified as a hero unit or is it classified as something else it's a, it's monster. a monster it's, a, it's classified as mm -hmm. so against that? yes she'll be know. she'll be good at burning down things talking to your mic willie use your words um <laughs> i i Go it ahead. will be better in like things like Eternal Shrines, Battlefield, uh, but there battle are better field. options for those kinds of maps, though. At level one? No, no, there's better heroes to pick for those maps than Bala. Oh, I yeah. will say the level one kill drops talent uh, takes forever to complete. Yeah, it's, it it it. I mean, three minutes of time at ten hatred stacks takes a long time. Yeah. And it's, that it's seems nice, insane. It, it's like level 20 when you get it. It's basically a delayed 20 talent. And just to reduce your dash by 5 seconds, I mean, Which it's is, nice. That, that's a big, I mean, that's but a 5 second At level 20, ball. it's less. It's yeah. less impressive. But you don't have Bolt anymore, so I don't know. It's it's a good, you know, the cooldown's 10 seconds, so it, you get twice as many vaults, basically. I don't know, a lot of people said that uh, Karazin's Insight quest was going to be really hard to accomplish. I've played it. It takes forever. Does it what? Really? Yes. No. Well, not charism, but Billy's trolling. Oh, I'm being kind of serious. <laughs> no, I, 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 
think it's, guy it's a really good once. talent when you can question Jeez, you Jimmy. complete it. It takes a lot, and I don't know, but it's not like. So I've I've been going back to hot pursuit and caltrops. Uh, hot pursuit's better early. Caltrops is better late. Depends what you want to play for. Okay. Anyways, that's my analysis on Vala. I think again. I don't know she felt pretty good if you can stay in the fight. She, I think she's a wor- a slightly worse duelist. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you used to be able to like jump in and one v one most backline carries, and she she can still do that to some. I don't think she can do it to as many. I think her sustained damage is better. Her upfront burst damage is weaker. But I think that's kind of what Vala was meant to do, anyways. So I don't know. I'll play her more definitely. <laughs> For sure. It'd definitely be uh, a hero to take a look at. Uh, we're actually at our hour mark, so I want to get final thoughts on the PTR patch before we close out the show and start doing some harems with viewers. We actually have quite a f- number of people in chat, so uh, make sure you join the Bliss Pro channel in-game uh, if you'd like to uh, join us. We're going to be on live. We're not going to be on uh, PTR. I know some people just don't like to play on PTR, but We'll go ahead and do that as soon as we wrap up the show. But uh, they're all playing Legion. They won't. Yeah, games. they're all playing Legion, anyways. <laughs> uh, but final thoughts on this PTR patch? It seems like they're changing a lot of things for the better. Maybe I don't know. It, it remains to be seen, but they're definitely trying to change the pace of the game and maybe slow it down a little bit with the mount changes, with the changes to globes as well. Uh, open discussion here. What do, what do you guys think? Just of the the patch overall i'm super excited for spell shield i'm glad that the mounts are being the speed is being changed i think the big maps will uh, be a lot more position heavy and and fun to play i I think this might actually improve garden of terror which everybody seems to not like but (laughs) we'll see um Mm -hmm. i'm very excited for those baseline or we'll just like those kind of changes that are just kind of going to be affecting the entire game uh the individual hero changes i never know I always feel like somebody's gonna like some of the changes are gonna be a lot bigger than they actually are. Mm-hmm. They're not, and then some minor it, change ends up rocking like Nazebo up fifteen percent on a win rate. So you can yeah, never <laughs> really tell for sure. It, it's, it's like uh, it's like whenever people do card reviews for Hearthstone, everyone was like, "Oh, Doctor Boom's gonna be terrible. No one's gonna play that card <laughs> yeah. ever." Mm-hmm. And he wrecked the the scene for Hearthstone for for a long time. This is true. Oh yeah, our uh, raffle by the way. Jimmy. Yeah, I actually opened it up. We yeah. are raffling away a Jaina. It's just Jaina the hero, but if you do not own Jaina currently, uh, go ahead and hit exclamation point raffle, and we will get you in the running for that code, and we'll get you, get that to you as soon as the show is over. Uh, Willie, what do you think of the PTR? I know you're you're uh, occupied there. Every hater cat, Meowington is the eighth, approves of this this giant patch. I think there's going to be a lot of great changes bringing, uh, coming into the game with this patch, especially with the bribe heroes. Um, and I think Johanna, on top of that, is going to shoot up quite a ways with uh, Night Takes Pawn becoming baseline. There's still the uh, the Forgotten Sun Chen. Um, but I, <laughs> with all of everything he's been getting ignored on, I think he's going to end up getting a massive rework. Like, uh, there's no way he, he can't at this point. Like, he's so untouched at this point. Um, but past Somebody that, loved me. the, the, uh, I see, I see that now, Artifice. <laughs> the, the, tr- the changes to all the heroes. I think it's going to be a really interesting time to see what kind of shakes out of this particular meta. It's, my fear is ratting's going to take over. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the term, ratting is essentially completely ignoring team fighting and just pushing where your opponents aren't and pushing harder than what they can or occupying uh, the enemy team while someone split pushes incredibly hard, that's my fear with the the, especially with the the bonus speed, uh, the mount changes, like they you can't react as quick. Like global presence heroes are gonna, I think, 
be a much higher priority than what they normally are. So like Haka, uh, Brightwing, uh, let's see, uh, Falstead, uh, Zagera especially, uh, those people are going to be just slightly higher priority, especially against split push comps. So just because they have the ability to react quicker than than others. So Artifice, uh, closing thoughts on the PTR as a whole and the impact it's going to have on the game going forward. Um, I still, th I think it's more about survivability. Like, I almost think the opposite of Willy because I feel like some of the changes that they've made to the more powerhouse characters are going to cause characters like Sylvanas to take a step back and not go so deep because once they're there and they're on you, there's no escape. Like, you can't get out the way you used to. In the same thing, I also think that a lot of these changes have to do with making the game more balanced so it'll be more fun that way instead of just once one bad wipe happens, it's a snowball. You still have a chance, and that's, that's what you want to aim for. You don't want it to just all fall apart because one big team wipe happened. It's not as much fun that way. Um, I will think it's interesting with the speed changes. Like, Are those changes also going to affect the dragon and the terror? I didn't see any notes on that. Nah, base no. move speed doesn't change. It's just mount. Yeah, it's just mount speed. So that, that'll have another different effect, and that'll be fun. Yeah, it's harder to chase I, them, I, th I guess. I think, I think that'll be good, because that's one of the main things, is there's too many wasted ones because of so much speed and so much damage now. Yeah. Yeah, that, that card and terror will have an easier time getting away from, from heroes with that uh, boost that, that they're able to give themselves. Mm -hmm. Carl, overall thoughts on PTR? I like most of the changes. Uh, I don't know that I like the relentless changes. Because, um, I mean, they did it for clarity reasons, but they were also talking about trying to reduce the, the stun, blow one person up immediately kind of meta. And, I mean, I guess resistant is a little more clear than that. I don't know whether it will accomplish the same thing as well or not. Um, maybe it will, maybe it won't. That one is up in the air. I like most. I like the mount speed changes and everything. I think split pushing isn't... Um, I think split pushing should be an acceptable style. Um, I just don't want it to be OP. I mm -hmm. don't think this will make it OP. Um, the reworks are fun. I think it's a pretty good patch overall. Uh, like I said, the only one thing I'm unsure about is the relentless changes. For sure. Uh, we're going to close out the raffle here in just one minute. And make sure you put your exclamation point raffle if you're wanting to enter. And we'll do that as soon as we are done here. But make sure to check out heroesofthestorm.plizpro.com. There's a lot of, of news from this week that we were not able to get to, uh, including... The uh, big changes with uh, the MVP system coming in this patch as well. And the free heroes that are going to be coming with the next patch if you don't have certain heroes. So if you want more details about that, heroesofthestorm.plizpro.com will get you those. And also we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash heroes power hour. Uh, just if you want to help us out, it uh, really helps us keep the show going and uh just it it's really fun to see you guys uh help contribute to the show and we really appreciate any support you can give and as always the show will always be free we'll never charge for it but uh if you're willing to it helps us out and also there's a couple cool uh tiers of incentives there you can choose our heroes for those after hours uh after show games that are coming up right now but let's give away this Gina and we are gonna close that raffle and we are gonna draw it it is ADE 494 congratulations ah. rigged <laughs> rigged <laughs> uh, but I will uh, PM you that from uh, my twitch account uh, DJ Tarrant as uh, soon as we are done here 
But I think that is going to be it for episode 72. Make sure to join us in those after show games. Join BlizzPro channel in the Heroes of the Storm client. And we will see you in the Nexus. Stay tight.